Hello everyone and welcome to Queer Cyclist. Today I am gonna walk you guys through my Crust Bambora build. I love this bike. This bike is like my child. I have never been attached to a thing like I have been attached to my Crust Bambora. I bought a medium sized Crust Bambora frame in early 2020 and I spent the first few months of the pandemic meticulously researching all of the components that I ended up putting on this bike. I scoured the internet for any picture, any content whatsoever of Crust Bambora builds. And I think that I watched Pathless Pedals two videos on his Crust Bambora 50 times a piece, just pausing, writing down what component he used. I don't think there's any crossover in our builds, but I just wanna say that was so helpful. And I'm really excited that I am now able to share my own build on YouTube. So let's jump into it. Everything that I mentioned in this video, I will link in the description below if you wanna check it out. If you follow my channel, you will know that I recently upsized from a 56 centimeter frame to a 58 centimeter frame. I did this because of some fit issues. I'm really tall, I'm 5'11 or 181 centimeters. I need a bigger bike and I've had some injuries that have resulted from riding bikes that were too small for me. So let's go from the front to the back. In the cockpit, I am running some salsa cow chippers that are 44 centimeters wide on an 80 millimeter whiskey handlebar stem. I've wrapped the handlebars in some Nubom's cushioned cloth bar tape. I love cloth bar tape. I know that there are bar tapes that are more efficient, that are more cushions, but I'm a texture guy and I really love the feel of that fabric in my hands. There's just nothing like it. I used to have tan bar tape, but when I switched over frames, I went with this bright green color and I chose green because my dad recently passed away and green was his favorite color. So this bar tape is kind of an homage to my dad so I can remember him while I'm riding. For brakes, I am running a SRAM Rival with an integrated paddle shifter. I chose white bar hoods which have gotten very dirty, but I don't mind it. I don't mind the dirt. I could have chosen black, which all of that dirt and grime wouldn't show up, but I feel like the dirtiness of it kind of shows how much this bike is loved and used. Maybe it's not for everyone, but I really like the aesthetic, so. For brakes, I have some TRP Spires. I don't like these brakes. I think that they are very mediocre. I have to adjust them like every hundred miles. It's really annoying. They need a lot of maintenance. They work fine. They're just, they're just fine. But I will say that the first component upgrade that I do for this bike will be to better disc brakes. I don't know if I will go to hydraulic brakes on this because that change would be really expensive, but I might go for some much higher quality disc brake calibers, TBD, but for now these are fine, but I'm not a huge fan of these brakes. For the saddle, I have the Brooks B17S and it is sitting on a Richie Classic seat post. I found the saddle for a great price on Facebook Marketplace. I would have gotten the regular B17 otherwise. That was kind of what I was looking for, but the S popped up and I was like, oh, this is probably fine. I'm gonna get it. I find the saddle to be way more comfortable than the Cell Italia Diva that I have on my Monet La Roca. Not everyone is a fan of leather saddles. It's the second Brooks saddle that I've had. My last Brooks saddle lasted me about five years. It would have lasted longer, but I left it out in one too many rainstorms. So take care of your leather, leather saddles and they will take care of you. Now, the crank set is a vintage Shimano Dura Ace that I had on an old road bike that I used to ride. The pedals are Shimano PD EH500 dual sided pedals. Eh. Eh, I don't really like them. I only really use the clip side. I'm probably gonna get rid of them relatively soon. I thought that I would be riding in flat shoes way more than I actually do. So 
I'm just not a huge fan of the flip-flop pedals. They're just fine. For all the gear and gearing and whatnot, I'm running a mullet drivetrain, meaning that I have road shifters and a cassette that is meant for a mountain bike. I saw this particular combination on bikepacking.com. So I called my bike shop and I was like, hey, can I do this? And they were like, hell yeah, that sounds awesome. And I was like, okay, let's do it. So the front chain ring is a wolf tooth 38 tooth gravel chain ring and it's held on with some green anodized chain ring bolts which is also from wolf tooth the rear derailleur is a sram rival and the chain ring is an e13 11 speed 9 to 46 tooth cassette Blech. that is a mouthful i find this drivetrain works wonderfully for just about everything except long, steep climbs. And if there's anything I could change about this drivetrain, it would be to make the front cassette a little bit smaller, maybe a 36 or a 34. However, with this vintage Dura Ace crank set that I insist on having, I can't put a smaller chain ring on there. So I'm stuck with this for now, unless I want to change the entire crank set. There have only been a very few occasions where I've really wanted to change the drivetrain. So for the time being, I'm really happy with this. For the wheel sets, I am running the Hunt 650B Adventure Carbon Disc. And the tires I currently have are the Rene Hurst Pumpkin Ridge 650B by 42s. The pumpkin ridges are great. They're really fast rolling. They're great in gravel and they're great on the road. So I'm happy with these for now. I'm also open to other tire combinations when these go out. So if you have suggestions, let me know in the comments below. As for the other little parts on the bike, I have some green anodized bolts that I put in the fork as well as some spacers. All of the green anodized parts come from Wolf Tooth. And lastly, I have two super cheap bottle cages from Amazon. And that's the build. That's the build, y'all. This bike is honestly great. It's extremely well made. It's really zippy. It's just really smooth and stable and better than any other gravel bike that I've ridden. I've been on a number of bikepacking trips. I take it to work. I go on all of these rides around town. I did my first century on this bike. I have hit some fitness milestones on this bike that I'm really, really proud of. I will never, ever get rid of this bike. I love it so much. If you like this content and want to see more, be sure to like this video and hit the subscribe button. And with that, I will see you guys next time.